Sing praises to the Lord, for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. Welcome back, everybody. Let's follow together. I almost forgot that. You know, God is good. I'm like, <laughs> almost feeling just kind of beat down, overwhelmed, tired out, frazzled, whatever kind of ad adjective or adverb you want to throw in there. But, man, God is good, and he's faithful, and he's true. And he cares. He is a, a present help in a time of trouble. Man, if not for the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ, I would not be here today. But he's given me a hope in his name and the power of his presence. Amen. We have a God who hears and can respond and who is mighty to save. Our God is mighty to save. All right, moving on. Don't want to, but I got to. Okay. I was reading in uh, Isaiah 30. Now, this was a prophetic word to Israel back in the day. And they were stubborn, man. They were, uh, they were under threat of the enemy. And they turned to, to Egypt. They turned to, uh, to man instead of God's plan for salvation, right? And God said, hey, it's not going to be good. But then he, uh, he promises redemption for his people. But I love this part right here. It's in 19, right? Well, I'm going to start 18. It says, Yet the Lord longs to be gracious to you. This is uh, Isaiah 30, verse 18, if you want to follow along. Therefore he will rise up to show you compassion. For the Lord is a God of justice. Blessed are those who wait for him. People of Zion who live in Jerusalem, you will weep no more. Right, there was going to be a time of great weep, weeping coming, but he said, you're going to weep no more. How gracious he will be when you cry for help. As soon as he hears, he will answer you. Oh, the Lord gives you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction. Your teachers will be hidden no more. With your own eyes, you will see them. This is it right here. This is what the Lord was showing me. Whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, This is the way, walk in it. Then you will desecrate your idols, overlaid with silver, your images covered with gold. You will throw them away like a menstrual cloth and say to them, Away with you. Why? Because you will know that there is a Lord God who hears and who is mighty to save, and He will show you how to go. I love that. Whether you turn to the the left or the right. You ever feel like that? Like decisions are, are crowding in. He's saying, whatever way you go, I'm with you. And I'm going to show you how to live. The other day, um, coming coming home, we, had, we have to drive far to take uh, my family to the dentist. Just kind of unfortunate, just how it is, right? And, uh, man, we woke up early. I was coming back, and I was battling with these uh, thoughts in my mind, just kind of feeling overwhelmed, but just talking to the Lord Jesus, right? And whether you turn to the left or the right, well, I was going down the highway on the way back, talking to Jesus. And, and uh, this is how he deals with me a lot of times in my life. But I look over and I saw a sign and I knew it didn't say this, but it's what I saw and it said, look for life. Look for life, whatever situation you're going through right now, I know, you know, depression and suicidal thoughts are rampant and just battling for control of your mind. But Jesus is going to put a stop to it. Look for life. That's what he told me. Look for life. When I looked at the sign, I knew, I knew it didn't quite say that, but it was like, look for life. And then one minute later, not even, cause I'm, I'm like, okay, I'm paying attention now. Cause I knew the sign didn't say that, but it's what I saw. Like, I, I can't explain that, but it's what I saw, and I'm like, okay, my eyes are open, right? I'm paying attention. Sometimes uh, with my own children, I got to say that. Pay attention. Stop. Hey! Right? I try to get their attention. I think sometimes God got to do that because we're so up in our own heads. You know, thinking about this, fighting that, whatever it is, right? We can lay it down at the foot of the altar, foot of the cross. Amen. Jesus paid it all. So, look for life. So, I'm looking. And all of a sudden, the car goes by me, maybe rather quickly. I don't know. Maybe the Lord was just saying, hey, get a move on. I need somebody to see this. 
is for me. It's personal, right? He's personal. Personal Lord and Savior. That's what he is, Jesus. Amen. Mm. I, I love in uh, Jeremiah 31, it says, From the least to the greatest, they will know me. Right? He, he said, you're not going to have to tell them to know me. Because from the least to the greatest, they'll know me. Well, I'm the least, but I know him. And even better, he knows me. And he hears my my call like he, he promised there in Isaiah 30. When you call for help, he will answer. Amen? Amen. No other God can do that. Why? Because he is the most high God. There might be other ones, little Jesus or whatever, but he's the big G God. He's the only one that can save this sinner. Amen? Make him a son. Anyway, I'm okay. Look for life. Car goes by me. <laughs> Cruising. And I saw the license plate. Or, or excuse me, bumper sticker. Thank you, Jesus. It wasn't their license plate. It was their bumper sticker. And it said, Children are a blessing of the Lord. And I thought, wow. Here I was. Taking my, my daughter and my boy to the dentist that day. Right? I'm feeling kind of frazzled. Kind of feeling like, man, I got this on my plate. Got that. I got to go home. I got to do this. Da, 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 da. You know, talking to Jesus, I, I, I'm, am I a good person? God, I want to be better. Help me be better, right? Help me to be the man you brought me out of the darkness into the light. And I want to, I want to live for the light, God. If there's any, you know, darkness, let's cut that out of there so I, I can live for the freedom that you paid for. Amen. I, I don't know. Maybe I get too involved with that, you know, wrapped up in that. But it can be my worries, right? And, and the devil know, knows he knows where to push. He knows where you're weak. But when we're weak, he's strong. Amen. That's what I, I love in uh, Paul. He, in his brutal honesty, he's like, when I'm weak, he's strong. Right? Because there's grace. There's grace to be found when we call for help in the name of the Lord Jesus. He is that present help. His Holy Spirit is with us and in us. And truth will guard our hearts because he is faithful to the beginning and end because that's who he is. Amen. Okay, I keep going. Children are a blessing from the Lord. And I was just like, they are. See, he's present. He's saying, this is the way to go. Walk in it, right? Now, you might not be getting bumper stickers. Uh, my wife just told me about one today. Just some, some crazy stuff at the house. I'm not, I'm not going to get into it too much. But, man, she was she was worked up, stressed out, and mad, she said. And and she left the house. Thank, thankfully, not mad at me. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will inherit the earth, right? I heard a preacher say it takes two to tango, but only one to pursue peace. So may we always pursue peace. No, it ain't easy, but with God's help, we can overcome evil with good. Help us, Jesus. Help your people to really shine with the light of Christ in us that you put there for your glory, for your honor. See, sometimes it might be like a blob on a painting. Me and my boy... Sorry, I'll get back to the blob. No, I'm going to finish the blob, and then I'm going to get back to the other story. I'm sorry, I just realized I did that. I do that quite often. Only Jesus can, can bring me back to that. Help me, Lord. Anyway, the blob is this painting. Uh, me and my boy were watching on uh, YouTube. YouTube's, YouTube's a lot of folly on it. There's some good, but there's a lot of folly. Amen. Help us, Jesus, make wise choices on what we watch and what we consume in our mind. Okay, so we were watching this painting, and this person was, I don't know if it was a guy or a girl, all we saw was a canvas, and they were just like putting blobs of paint on, and my boy's learning his colors, so he, he loves colors. It's green, he's like, green, right? He's learning to say this, the colors, it's so cute, so awesome, so innocent, amen. Innocent children in Christ, I, I love it. But uh, may, we, may we be that Jesus. Your innocent children. No, I just saw a video, and they were blasting some some churches for worshiping all crazy. Well, how about David? He was dancing so much that that he was losing clothes, right? So it's easy to look down on another. It takes a whole lot of cojones to build another person up, right? It's the spirit working in us. It's not your cojones. It's surrendered heart to the Lord Jesus because He loves you. Amen. Anyway, so there had blobs on this painting. Well, it wasn't a painting yet. It was just blobs. But under the mastery of the artist, 
he turned them blobs, started doing some stuff with them. I didn't see nothing. I didn't see nothing to be honest with you. It wasn't until he was almost done. It was just all of a sudden this this portrait and the moon and, and trees. And I'm just like, wow, that looks really good. At first, I'm like, trying not to skip it, right? If I, I probably would have if I wasn't so tired. And my boy liked it. But I, I hung around a minute and watched that the magic that the art artist bring his artwork to life. And that's what Jesus can do with our blobs, right? Well, we might just see this part of the story, or we might see our, our mistakes, our sin, our folly, how quick we are to forget his goodness. But in his hands, he can make something beautiful, right? He showed me love in the midst of my tragedy. I heard a rap song say that before. But I'm going to get back to my wife. She was going through some stuff, feeling feeling the heat, feeling the pressure. Um, Isaiah says in one place, I think, I, I forget where it's at, but he says, when you go through waters, deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through the fire, I'll be there, right? He's walking with us even through the hard times, even through the times where we cannot see the forest for the trees. My buddy's sailing along. Anyway, she goes out and... Uh, my wife has a very unique name. I kind of, I probably said it on here before, but I don't feel like that's necessary right now. Maybe save her anonymity. So if you want to like tear somebody down, you can tear me down, right? I, I probably did it to myself enough. But uh, anyway, she saw, it's a unique name. She saw this name on a license plate with a bunch of hearts. Not a license plate. Why well, I keep saying that? I think it was a bumper sticker. I don't know, maybe because every once in a while I'll see numbers on the license plate and I'll just be like, my mind will go to scripture. Why? Because I have that relationship with him. Anyway, I'll see like Psalm 60 or 63 and I'll be like, Psalm 63, I cling to you because your right hand upholds me, right? I'm, I'm looking to Jesus, but ultimately it's him holding on to my life, right? And he ain't going to let his sheep go. He ain't going to let his kid go. Amen. Hallelujah. That gives me strength. I don't know about you guys. That gives me the hope that I can do what he's calling me to do even when I feel like I'm falling and frazzled. Why? Because he's stronger than I am. Thank God he is. Right? Because I go to the gym and I'm starting to get starting to get a little buffed. So I, I, I did tell you about the hearts. Right? Of my wife. Yeah, I just did. And she knew it was the Lord saying, I, I got you. I still love you, right? I'm with you. I know things are crazy, but I got you. But anyway, I'm going to the gym, starting to get swollen up, right? Getting some chest muscles, some bicep, thinking I'm big stuff. <laughs> and I'm in there today trying to squat, and my leg game is is not great. My knees are shot. My body's kind of beat up, probably from uh, living my life pretty reckless for a long time. But anyway, God's giving me a new one, so I'm going to try to live it for him. I'm doing squats. And some other people were there. And they were way younger than me. And they were doing the weight I was doing. Like it was nothing to them. I got stuck on the one. I got down. And I'm like, I really panicked in my mind for a second. Because I've seen people well, on YouTube, once again, fail doing squats. And it's not pretty, right? And I'm like, this thought went through my mind. I'm stuck. Like, I'm stuck. And it was like a panic. And all of a sudden, they shot up. I'm always said, was it adrenaline? I thought, no, because after that, it wasn't all like, you know, you get when you get adrenaline. I think the Lord saved my bacon there, right? Anyway, <laughs> thank you, Jesus, for letting me not die on the squat rack. But uh, I thought with them kids there doing it, you know, there's always somebody stronger, faster, better at it. You might be for a little bit, for a moment, but not long. But God is the strength of his people. He is the salvation for his anointed one. Anyway, I just thought uh, this would encourage you and equip you and uh, maybe convict you if, if uh, I was going to say for into that. No. no, God's a good father. Right? And he'll say, hey, walk this way. Walk this way. And uh, I, I don't know about you guys, but he's always moving me towards making peace and forgiving, man. Forgiving the unforgivables. Because I can be really quick. To point out the speck in another person's eye, but Jesus is the one who who helps me remove things from my eyes, so I can see clear 
to try to help another person, right? Because it's real easy. Man, I don't know about you guys, but it's real easy to tear another one down. And it can start in here, and it can start to fester, but bitterness. And what are those trees? Chestnut tree. Remember? Well, you don't because it was probably before all of our times. Maybe there's someone here watching that's older, and I, I apologize if I've disrespected you at all. Not what I'm trying to do here. But uh, the American chestnut tree, it's the, it's like a, a blight. That's what it is. I think the Bible calls it a, a bitter root, right? A root of disappointment. It stunts, stunts the tree. And, and they have these roots, and the tree will grow, and the blight will hit it, and they'll just die, and then it'll grow back, and then it'll start springing to life. And that's what bitterness is, but only God can make us better. It's Jesus. That's what he did on the cross, how he paid it in full for this fool. And I know I'm not supposed to call myself a fool or anyone else, right? Jesus said, whoever calls another a fool is in danger of the fires of hell. Jesus says some pretty intense stuff, right? He reprimands us, but it's because why? He loves us and he cares about us. And he's saying, hey, this is the way to go. Walk in it. This is the way to go. You, I don't know about, do you guys get that? Do you guys get that? The Holy Spirit chiding you, or the man, when you want to be like, man, I want to hold on to that anger, mm, right? They wronged me. And God's like, let it go. Forgive them. Maybe maybe he doesn't do that with you, but man, he does that with me often, right? I, I don't need help getting angry. I can get angry pretty quick, but I need help to overcome that anger and walk in forgiveness and love. And only Jesus can do that by the power of the Spirit within a man, new creation status. Because of his finished work. Because we have a living hope in our Lord and our Savior. And he's coming again. So let's live all in. <sighs> Decompress. No, God is good. And he's worthy of praise. So I'm just going to end it there for tonight. And uh, you're not alone. This is the way. Walk in it. Be blessed. Oh boy.